little glib glops. How you doing today? Now we're off to part four of the Orc Grazkul's Rise to Power from Data Slate Wag. Last time was a long one, so today is going to be kind of a short one. We're going to talk about taking over the Space Hulk in a section they called Exodus. As solar flares and radiation storms wafted from Urk's tortured sun, Grazkul turned to his mechs and bade them secure the Space Hulk using super heavy tractor cannons. A few of the available spacecraft were equipped with harpoon rockets, and they fired these off to tether the colossal Space Hulk to one of Urk's twin moons. For the moment, the Space Hulk was pinned, but all knew it could not be so for long. Under Grazkul's orders, the remaining orcs rushed to assist the mechs. They worked non-stop to craft as many crewed transport ships as they could. They were perhaps 100 constructions worthy of being called ships while the other craft were built to complete only a single journey. There were many hundreds of these crude rockets, each capable, incapable of being steered, each with orcs and equipment wedged into every hold and crawl space. Boarding the largest of this crude fleet, Grazka led the great exodus from the planet to seize the Space Hulk. With exhaust flashes and more than their share of premature detonations, along with a lot of mid-air collisions, the departing crafts filled the sky. Some of the ships struck the Space Hulk's outer decks and detonated to blow gaping holes into the superstructure. A few rockets plowed deep into the hulk to, depo to deposit their orc cargo, while the most sturdily constructed ships actually had the wherewithal to fly about the vast space hulk and seek out landing sites, or at the very least, to enter the vast hulk through the massive holes blown into it by less fortunate rockets. An abode of demons. Alas, as it is often the case, the Space Hulk was not unoccupied. As soon as the first waves of orcs landed, they were attacked by demon entities. Burna boys, cutting their way through the bulkheads, had to suddenly shift from slicing metal to defending themselves against a tide of demons. Gouts of dirty orange flame were met in kind by arcane blue jets as the Burna boys traded scorching death with prancing pink horrors. Before their ships had even settled, speed freaks launched themselves from cargo ranks, ramps, racing down the cavernous corridors, guns blazing, Less than half of the orc spacecraft were able to lift off once again, but these that could disengaged their cargo in order to go back to Urk Sorphris to ferry more greenskins into the battle. The fighting took weeks, during which time billions of greenskins were airlifted off of Urk to join the fray. Of course, this is almost a mathematical impossibility, but let it go. Grazkul himself led the spearhead that fought its way to the center of the Space Hulk. There, at the black heart of the jumbled amalgamation, was an ancient craft none other than the vast star freighter Dominion. After leaving Urk, then called 
Uroclase to escape the Urk attack many thousands of years ago. The ship had engaged in a warp incident and its crew had become lost. The terrified human cargo attracting the horrific creatures that dwelled there. The Dominion had returned home. But where its warp engines had once been located, there was now a huge warp rift. A darksome hole from which the energies of the immaterium poured forth. Having driven the demonic hosts before him, Grazkul ordered the massed firepower of his entourage to be turned against the tear in reality. To his frustration, eh, this did fucking nothing. With a bestial war and leaking raw green psychic energy from his reconstructed skull, Grazkul charged the warp tear. To further anger the warp lord, the warlord, his power claw uh, proved equally ineffective in sealing the warp rift. With an almighty challenge, Grazkul screamed at the gods themselves and unleashed the full power of his best headbutt. <laughs> there was a flash of green energy, an audible pop, and at last. The rift collapsed in upon itself. Whether it was the force of that blow or the latent psychic energy within Grazkul, it was done. The demon threat ended, at least for a time. The Space Hulk, which Grazkul had named World, World Killer, was now in orc control. Just as superheated gas clouds swept over Urk, World Killer shifted back into the warp. And now is a short narrative called Gore Splashed Boarding Action, in which they tell you about the general mayhem and killing of pretty much freaking everything in the Space Hulk. The fight to take over the demon-held Space Hulk was a bitter battle through ever-changing confines. Neither side showed mercy, hacking at each other in the narrow corridors and turning vast cargo bays into slaughter pits where entire armies clashed headlong. Now and again, newcomers would join the fight, a fresh type of demons sweeping from the Space Hulk's core, or an orc rocket crashing in to deliver its living payload. Slowly, the orcs drove the demon host back, but at every junction lay an ambush, and casualties were high on both sides. It was Mad Doc Gratnik that led the charge to win the landing bays of what must have been an old imperial transport. The landing craft berthed within were still occupied by the skeletons of their long dead pilots. The few craft that were still operational were commandeered and looted to aid in their orcs transport efforts. It was Ugrax Uglies, the goth knobs mob that fought their way into the asteroids embedded deep within the Space Hulk. There, in magma-worn tunnels, they pitted Power Claw against Hellblade. And in the end, only Ugrax Combi Scorcha swept the path clear. In the larger holds, battle wagons lowered their death rollers to mash all opposition before being countered by demonic soul grinders. Hulking demon engines whose metal claws shredded the orc vehicles. Soon, orc 
tank busters were ham hunting the soul grinders, crawling through minuscule air vents to send rockets corkscrewing into their unnatural enemies, blowing them apart in sprays of flame and ichor. Behind the front waves of fighting came the mechs, welding over patches and resealing airlocks, repairing their battled engines of war to fight another day. Boom! Like I said, it was a short one, but let me tell you what comes next, and you know you've all been waiting for it. It is simply titled, They Called It Armageddon. Ha 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 ha! That'll be a long one. So until next time, bye!